everybody, this is Annie, and today I'm with Julie and Adam and friends, and we're visiting Twilight Safe Haven and Sanctuary. Welcome to Animal Bond Academy. Hi, nice to meet everyone. <laughs> My safe haven eight years ago because we needed more sanctuary for horses. A lot of people don't realize what happens to horses. Um, a lot of times they go into auction, then they, if they don't find homes, they go into slaughter. People do eat horse meat. It's a big thing in Canada and Mexico, and we're trying to stop that. Um, it's horrible for these horses, the way they're treated. I mean, it's just bad. And then all the byproducts goes into other things as far as glue and all that stuff. So we were my safe haven for eight years. Um, Wow, this is gonna break me um, We had a horse named Twilight, and he was our first rescue. And he was starved, you know, horribly starved. He was put into a pasture with having yeah. ewes. No, no, he, he was in a small pen up in San Bernardino. Yeah. It was in a pen with 11 other Arabs, all looked like him, all gray Arabs. They were in a foot of mud, no water. Just me, like, so we seen the pictures from the Humane Society, and he was straight bone, no fat on his body at all. Yeah. So we got him from a Humane Society yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, so he, um, so we had him the whole time, and just back in September, last year, August. September, August of last year, um, he had cut his leg, but it was a, it was like a small cut. It was like okay, we had to let him out, cleaned it out. It's like okay, give him all his meds. He'll probably heal. Well, three after the vet left, he threw a blood clot and went to the ground and passed. So we were wanted to know how we were going to honor him. We wanted to think about what to do. So we're like, okay, let's change the name into Twilight's Safe Haven because he loved horses. He loved helping horses. He was the first one there to be a friend and to welcome. So that's how Twilight's came about. <laughs> so we, we, do, we even do the big horses too. Okay. So we'll do all the big horses out, open up the pasture gate, and then just run around the whole property. They come, they come to the house for carrots, for apples. They go down and back and graze. They run all over the place. Um, yeah, all our horses have been liberated. We don't ride them. So they came from bad places. They come here and they're, we're like a magical place. We make them happy and they're healthy, they're safe. And they stay here until the end of their life. The only thing we ask of them is that you wake up every day, go ha be happy and play. That's the only thing they have to worry about. The only time they ever really they get have no jobs is for <laughs> when we need to obviously put them back in their pens or when we have to do like their feet or their teeth, vaccines, dewormers, stuff like that. So. You have to have a connection to an, any animal and why, why animals get liberated. Because they don't have jobs, they have feelings. They have a soul, they have a heart. We don't want to put a saddle on them and a piece of metal in their mouth. Right. It hurts them, it hurts their mouth. When they cinch up a horse, it's uncomfortable. They look at their side because it hurts them. They expand their gut because it hurts them. They don't want it on. Why would you want to get on a horse and make them work? They're not here for that. They're not here for our pleasure. We're here for them. We're here for them. They're not here. You don't have to work for your food. Yeah. And that's what people say. People say that all the time. I really can't stand that. Oh, my horse has to work for their food. They have, to, they have a job. No. Our horses don't have jobs. We're here for them to keep them safe, health, healthy, and happy. <laughs> so camp, <laughs> Jack's ways, I said, don't really know as far as weight wise. I know he's about, as far as height wise, he's about 17, 2, 17, 3. He's a big guy. So, but as far as weight, uh, I'm not sure. Because uh, the lady we got him from was free feeding him alfalfa. Yeah. And like, he was lean. So, like, it took a while to get his weight to where he's at now. But he's a, he's a big guy. Yeah. He was definitely uh, not handled properly when we first got him. So when, before when we first got him, you would do his trims and you'd have him on a lead line, he would actually rear straight up constantly on you. So he's a, he's a big horse to have him stand up on his hind legs looking down at you. So he's gotten a lot better. He's still not a big fan of his blanket, but he gets it on. <laughs> so eight years ago, we were like, we was like, we were, let's get a horse. We had no idea, we didn't even think rescue. I want to get a horse again. Yeah. 
yeah. so we found Twilight and we fell in love with him and Twilight <laughs> Twilight was a mess. He was he was he was about six years old, super anxious. Just he wasn't really he was see he was gelded very late in life. So um, he was like he paced really bad. He used to put like giant holes in his pen when pacing so much. Yeah. Just because he was just so nervous. Yeah, no trust. We couldn't even get near him. We couldn't even put a, any type of halter on him to do anything with him. So we hired a trainer and um, he came out, worked with him, and it was great after that. People love it when they come out because they talk to the horses. Like, you, if you walk around here, all the horses will come up and greet you, every yeah. single one. Yeah. And they're used to that because that's how we are with them. People need to stop treating them like, oh, they're just an animal. They're not just an animal. They have feelings. They have a soul. You have to have that connection. You have to see it. And that's where it comes in. When you start seeing it and feel it, it changes the game. You start treating them different. You treat them with compassion and you treat them better. And then you're going to get that kind of response back. You're, you're going to have that tight-knit, close love in your relationship. We'll do something to love people. Like if you had treats right now, oh, it would be way, way, oh my, way, oh. Be way worse. Oh, it's so much worse. <laughs> we have 24 now. Is that 24? 24. 24. <laughs> they have to count. Yeah. We did have 22, but then we took a couple more and we did 24. Yeah, because we're starting to, we're starting to focus because on the Wrangler. minis and the mules now a little bit, try to take more of them in because they need one. Hi, bud. Come here. You, know, you get a lot of minis into the auctions and kilts. And donkeys and mules. I mean, they're really coming in a lot. Right? This, this is, is Reno. Reno. He's a Mustang. Wrangler. So Wrangler, we don't really know, he came from the kill pen, we don't know too much about him. He just, he's definitely been abused, because he first came here, he was very angry towards people. Great with horses, but angry. Like, you can pet him, he, he'll grind his teeth, like, I, I, like almost like lunge at you and pin his ears. He still, see, he still pins his ears a little bit, so he's still kind of over being handled, but he has gotten better. So you just gotta be a little careful with him a little bit, you know, when you pet him, stuff like that. So he's never hurt anybody, but. Jake. Jake Jake's is the owner of really good friend. He's a Mustang. And they're best of friends. Oh, they are. Yes, they play. They'll, they'll run up and down this fence line playing. We can't have the horses with the maze meal dog. Yeah. No, they play through the fence line because they can get hurt. Yeah. They're, they're not going to, they don't mean to hurt, but they're bigger and they can travel over them. No. 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 Yeah. So our pasture goes way behind those trees. And that's a forest. The horses can walk through the forest. It's really cool. Hello, Peanuts! That's one thing we can use if the company wants to volunteer their time. Yes, you want to volunteer to come do um, tree a brush or, <laughs> or wood chipping. <laughs> That'd be great. If a company comes out and volunteers their time to wood chip all that wood out there. We need a wood chipper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this is Peanuts. He came here at four months old. He came out of a mold. He was starved at a really young age. So from being starved, his uh, I can't remember how much leg it is. His muscle never fully developed. So when he goes a step, his leg will actually snap up, or his leg will buckle. Because um, his mom was starved. Yeah. And she was nursing him. She was she was so yep, there busy, he is. Really busy. So he didn't get the nutrients when he was baby. So this is blue. She has one blue eye. Oh, she's blue. Yep. Blue. <laughs> she's the owner of Lake Shore here. Um, she came with another horse. Yeah. That was having seizures. You couldn't get up anymore. Well, what happened was this lady. She was elderly. Her husband passed away, and this was. Um, they were both his horses, but he died. The daughter just left the mother up here and went and moved to the city. Left the elderly mom up here. Mom didn't know how to care for the horses. She put hay in her car and would just go out and just kind of throw it out there. Blue was the aggressive eater. Cimarron was not. So when you have one that's aggressive eater, it's not, you have to separate them. Yeah. 
So she didn't know to do that. So Cimarron got emaciated. And when we got the call, the daughter actually called us and said, we need help. So we went out there. Cimarron was on the ground already. He was so emaciated, he couldn't even get up. We somehow, by the miracle of God, got him into our horse trailer and got him here. He was here a day and he, did, he went down and he kept having having seizures. So he came out and they did testing and said, yeah, we have to euthanize him. He's not so it's just being so emaciated for that long caused all the seizures. You, could, I mean, you can't have a horse that can't stand and can down. It's not good. He wasn't responding to any like noise yeah. or anything. So Blue's okay. Blue's smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Texas! And Texas is the sheriff around here. <laughs> He's the sheriff. Hi, Te everyone loves Tex. Everyone yeah. loves Tex. So he came out of Kilton in, in Texas. Oh, Tex was so. very sick. He had sh really bad shipping fever. Shipping fever? Yeah. yeah. So basically, from being on like being around all the different animals and stuff like that, and being in and out of trucks and stuff like that, basically a horse cold. Okay. So he had, he had, he had oh, it's not like you ever heard a dog with kennel cough? Yeah, yeah. He had that. Oh. He, he had, had it nose. so bad. He was underweight. His congestion was so bad. We didn't know if he was going to make it. But we uh, got him healthy, and he loves life. He is just full of. Spirit, love, full of everything. So, Holly came from up here. His owner's from right here. She also came from up here. Uh, that's Mystic. So, her story was her previous owner was in the airport. He just died in a car crash. Well, they didn't really want her anymore. Yeah. And they basically just neglected her. Oh. So, the day we showed up to, to pick her up, she had a halter on and she was hooked to an old porcelain tub, the big bathtubs, oh. and her face was all bloody. So we actually had to cut the halter off her to get her out of here. Oh. Couldn't get in the trailer. So we had her from over there. I had to walk her all the way down the road in the rain. Oh. She wouldn't get in the trailer. She refused to get in the trailer. Yeah. So, yeah. so we, 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 at least we were together. But we separated for feeding because he'll run her off from the food and she's already leaning her as it is. Like we, her. <laughs> Look at Thelma and Louise. They're so funny. No, it's Larry and Karen. Oh, never mind. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. I yep. know. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs>
because uh, Thelma and Louise were kind of like a last minute addition. Yeah. So we actually have more shelters. We're going to build a yeah, big we're still, shelter. We're all rebuilding it. Yeah. yeah. Also, like oh, yeah. all the ones out in the pasture with the little A frames used to be a one big shelter. But from the wind, the wind really ripped it out of the ground. So and then we have this hunkered state down to the ground. These things were so bad, it ripped it into pieces and flew it into the cow pasture. So we did the little houses and hooked them to the crop house. They have a close garage. But now, they know, we have, they we have know big where one. treats and grain is. Ah! ah, ah. No, no, no. We're, we're going to build a big one in the pasture so they all can fit inside there. So we're always building, always. Yeah. We always find good deals on shelters, cr shelters yeah. corral panels. We always look for the deals. So, is there anything before we go, anything that you want to say that you really felt like you needed to say? Or Be kind to animals. <laughs> Be kind to animals, that's all we ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for us, everybody. From Twilight, Safe Haven, Rescue, and Sanctuary, Annie, Julie, and Adam, and the gang. We'll see you next time on Animal Bond Academy. Bye. Holy cannoli! Yeah, everybody's behind us. Okay. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh my god.